Our God and Father, we come before thy throne of mercy, approaching it with reverence for this opportunity that you've given unto us this evening, a special day in our calendar as Christians and in our lives, the day we come to commemorate your institution of the Holy Table and the Holy Orders. As I further meditate on your word, may you further use my tongue and may the meditations that come from my heart be ordained of you. I pray for all that are gathered here this evening. May you, Father, outpour your spirit on each and every one of us. And may you, Father, be able to teach us the reason for this season so that we may be able to understand the mysteries of your doings in our lives. As we share your word, Father, may you direct us and give us the spirit of calm to patiently listen unto it. And this is my prayer of faith, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. God is good, and all the time, and that is his nature. And it is an exciting time to be in the house of the Lord when we have come this Monday, Thursday, to commemorate and remind ourselves of the things that happened more than 2,000 years ago when Christ was sacrificed and sacrificed his life for the atonement of my sins and the atonement of your sins. And it is Monday Thursday, it should not be lost to us as Christians, and it is a reminder of what is Holy Communion or the Eucharist that we shall be celebrating, and who should partake of it and what are the benefits associated with the same. And I have titled my sermonette, Muse, Memories, and Mandates. Muse, Memories, and Mandates. And I want to start with a question to you and to also myself, because when we live here, we shall be going home, and many of us will be joining family for dinner or for the meals of the evening. And the question I would want to ask is, what makes a meal special? What is it that makes a meal special? And if I pose that question to each and every one of you, I know the responses would be as varied as we are diverse this evening. And some of you would be saying the meal is maybe special because of the date on which it falls. It could also be that the meal is special because of the china that is used, and my, I mean the cutlery and the ware that is used in serving the meal. Somebody might say the meal is special because of the candles that have been lit on the dinner table? Is a meal special because of the festive table and the dressings that have been put on that table? Is the meal special because of the food that is being served, whether it be chicken, whether it be ham, or whether it be beef? Is the meal special because of the gathering of the family and the friends around the meal table? Is it in the remembering of the traditions of why we are having and celebrating the meal? And so the question is, what is it that makes a meal special? And tonight, as we celebrate Monday Thursday, or Mandatum Thursday, or also called the Commandment Thursday, we must be reminded that we come together for a very special meal. The meal we come for this evening, and the meal we commemorate when we approach the Holy Table 
is a very special meal. It is a meal made special not by what we eat. And I can assure you, none of us is going to live here basically saying that the taste of bread was very great or the savoir of the wine was the best they have ever tasted. The meal will not be made special because of the elaborate decorations that we have on the altar table. The meal will not be special because of the, the altar paraments or the altar vestments that we have. The meal this evening that we partake is special for a very different reason. The meal is special for a very different reason. And why I would say that the meal today is very special for a different reason is because tonight we are called a common people to reflect on God's redemptive activity of the past. And that redemptive activity of the past is his death on the cross for my sins and also for your sins. And this meal or this redemptive activity is manifested through Christ for now and eternity. It is manifested through Christ for now and also for eternity. And tonight, we join in a special meal for special people who are given a special command. And shortly, we shall be reflecting on that command. And as we remember our own traditions tonight, we also recall the traditions of our past and the special meal that the first celebrate that was first celebrated by God's redemptive work with his people those very many years ago. And as we read the scripture in Exodus, there's a scripture in Exodus we read about the Passover feast. And it helps us to recount the meal that was celebrated those very many years ago where the Israelites and the children of God were told to smear their doors with the blood of the lambs that they had slaughtered where they were supposed to eat the meat with unleavened bread. And so this meal that we commemorate today is a reminder of what happened very many years ago on the basis of the promise that God had given the children of Israel. And on this night, we come together in community to remember the promises given to our forefathers. The promises that were given to Abraham and to Sarah. The promises that were given to Isaac and to Rebekah. The promises that were given to Jacob, Rachel, and Leah. And the promise, as we all know, was to grow them. The promise that God would be their God and that they would be his people. And so we remember how the covenant relationship made somebodies out of those who are deemed to be nobodies. 
the covenant that God made with his people made somebodies from people who were nobodies. Because we all know that there were slaves condemned in Egypt under the oppression of Pharaoh. And yet, God, who is a very merciful God, saw their suffering and with his love, he brought them to freedom from the land of captivity. And the Jewish people remember in this special meal how they were commanded to eat unleavened bread, which was a sign of the great haste and speed with which they needed to eat before their march to freedom. And this meal serves also as a symbol of the relationship between the believer and God. Just as the unleavened puffed up bread, just like the unleavened bread is not puffed up, obviously we know the unleavened bread will not be able to climb or to become puffed up. The same way is the attitude we should use when we approach the altar table. The same humility is what we should have when we are approaching the meal that we are bound to institute this evening. And it is also a reminder because they ate the bread with bitter herbs it was a reminder of the bitterness and the struggle which they went through as slaves in the land of captivity or in Egypt. And so, even as we approach the table today, we must be reminded that the significance of the unleavened bread is that we are supposed to be humble because Christ himself was her, was humble. We should never come to the altar table with our attitudes. We should never come to the altar table with our arrogance. We should never come to the altar table with our human attitude. We should be able to allow the humility of Christ to be in us. When we take it and we are reminded that they took it with bitter herbs, we should also be reminded it is not that we are worthy. It is because Christ has borne all our sin, our sins. He has been able to redeem us. He has been able to renew us. He has been able to reinstate us to the love that Christ and God had intended for us. And so as we approach this meal today, let us be reminded it is a meal that has a difference in our, in our lives. It is a meal that is supposed to unite us with Christ. It is a meal that is supposed to remind us of his redemptive power. It is a meal that is supposed to remind us that he was able to die for my sins and also for your sins. And so tonight, as we gather to celebrate, we celebrate a covenant in Christ, a covenant that does not destroy the old, but fulfills it. Just like he had given the covenant to Abraham and Sarah and to all the others, that is the same covenant he is giving us and renewing us with this evening. And just as the Jewish people were chosen by God and rescued from their oppression, so too are we rescued from the sin of the world and made God's children and heirs of his kingdom. So when we approach, let us always remember that our sins have been forgi forgiven. And that doesn't give us the liberty to come and approach the holy table and then go out and sin again 
sin again. It gives us the understanding that because he died for our sins, we should purpose to walk in his dire direction. We should purpose to live in his will. And we, like the ancient Israelites, are nobodies. We are nobodies as we come to this church this evening. We are nobodies as we approach the altar table. And as Paul says, not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. But we are made somebodies by the nature of Christ's death and resurrection. And as we take together Christ's body and blood, we remember the price Christ paid for us on the cross to usher us to the new covenant which proclaims everlasting love for us and for the world. May we always internalize his everlasting love for us. May we always internalize the sacrifice he did to die on the cross for my sins and also for your, for your sins. And just as the eating of unleavened bread and bitter herbs reminds the Jewish people of their humility before God, so too does Christ command our humility and love taking upon us the form of a servant. And so, we are reminded in the institution of the Holy Eucharist, we don't come as bosses, we don't come as leaders, but we come as, a, as servants. To go out and serve other people, just like Christ was able to go out and serve other, other people. And we are a called people, called through the rich traditions of the past to proclaim Christ's redemptive activity in the present and the future. May God help us to be able to constantly proclaim his salvation to others. It is not for ourselves. It is not an individual thing. It is something we are supposed to go and proclaim to, our, to others. It is something we are supposed to give freely. It is something we are supposed to share boldly so that others can also be able to feel the presence of God in their, la in their lives. And what makes these meals special? I want to remind you, it's not the food. I want to remind you, it's not the setting. It is not our worthiness at being at the table. It's the gathering of God's people in remembrance of a holy meal. It is bearing witness to a rich inheritance of God's redemption. It's the gathering of a special people united in the Holy Spirit for the common purpose of proclaiming Christ's truth. It is our commandment and commitment to live as Christ's servants following in his, comma, in his commands. And so, as we reflect, it is important to ask ourselves, are we following Christ's commands? Are we being like Christ himself? Are we being servants of Christ? And so, as we commemorate and approach the holy table, and as we go through the service of washing the feet, and with a towel clasped in our hands, and the cross upon our backs, we should be able to stand with humility before our Lord, coming together at the table as one people. And we open our hands and our hearts, our hearts to the redemptive power of the Spirit. Let us be reminded that as we approach the table, as we approach the meal, it can bring blessings or it can bring us curses. And so let us understand to approach it with humility. 
Let us understand of the redemptive power of Christ. Let us be reminded that it is the renewal of the covenant that God had with his people. And so, every time we come and renew that covenant, it is important to know that when you break the covenant, then it means you're getting out of God's great grace. And so, may God help us to understand and to be reminded of this institution of the Holy Table and the meaning it has in our lives and that we approach it with humility, we approach it with reverence, we approach it with obedience, we approach it as servants, and we approach it to become like Christ himself, himself. And so, this evening, as I remind you, I'm also reminded that I need to approach the holy table to reunite myself with Christ, to walk in his direction, to understand his death on the cross was not in vain. He was able to take away my sins, and he was also able to take away your, your sins. And so, as he instituted this to the disciples, so we also institute it among ourselves to be able to first unite among ourselves and also unite ourselves with Christ in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.